No, we can squeeze you in the front row if you're not ashamed of coming up front. We got some seats up here still. Merry Christmas, folks. Over the last two weeks, I've received probably about a half dozen either phone calls or direct messages from people talking to me, wondering if we were going to do this outside this year. <laughs> For those of you who think I lack wisdom, I proved you wrong. We're inside. But uh, for those of you who are from out of town, we are really pleased to have you here. If you're from town, we're glad we're, you're here too. We're glad everybody's here so we can celebrate our Lord's birth. Um, truly an amazing day where we recognize that God loved us so much that he decided to come and walk among us as one like ourselves so that we can be saved by one like ourselves. I invite you, if you would, please stand as we look to our manger scene. My friends, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us ask God's blessing on this manger scene and upon ourselves. When we look upon these figures, may the Christmas gospel come alive, that we may be moved to rejoice in the mystery of God becoming flesh and living among us. God of every nation and people, from the very beginnings of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for a Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born of the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy, and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus. And may our thoughts to him who is God with us and Savior of all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends, I now invite you to reach out to those around you and share a sign of welcome.
friends, we come together in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Friends, today we celebrate the great gift of God's presence born among us in Jesus Christ. As we begin our prayer, let us ask for mercy for the times we have turned away from God's love. Lord Jesus, you are Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you gladden us year by year as we await in hope for our redemption. Grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge. For he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The prophet Isaiah 
lived 750 years before Christ. In his time, the northern Jewish kingdom of Israel was laid waste by the armies of Assyria. Today's passage offers the conquered people hope for a glorious future under a wonderful king. Christians have seen Jesus as fulfilling this prophecy. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole of their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rest. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father forever, and Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. chosen one I have made a covenant I have sworn to David my servant I will establish your dynasty forever and set up your throne through all ages forever
Friends, the prophet I, or excuse me, the letter to Titus was written about 30 years after Paul's death and was written in Paul's name, a practice common in the ancient world. Titus was a traveling companion of Paul and later was in charge of a Christian community on the island of Crete. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Proclaim to you good news of great joy. Today a Savior is born for us, Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, And she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over the flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise I realize for many of you this will come to be a great shock, but to my family and closest friends, I am often annoying. (laughs) And part of the reason why I'm annoying happens usually right after Thanksgiving. When first beginning with my parents and now with my close friends would ask me, What would you like for Christmas? And I never answer. And I learned not to answer when I was just a wee lad of only about 200 pounds or so. (laughs) When I recognized that my parents always knew me better than I knew myself. They always knew things that I would like more than I thought I would. And I always received gifts from them that were much more special than anything I could have asked for. So I continue to do that with my friends, and it always proves to be the point. They know me oftentimes better than I know myself because they love me better than sometimes I love myself. Well, that is very similar to the world receiving the Messiah. The people had begun to have visions of what they thought the long-awaited Messiah would be like. And their visions were much more in the line of King David. The Messiah they were looking for was one that was going to be an earthly ruler that would restore the nation of Israel to prominence that would get rid of all of the occupiers that they struggled with over the centuries, make them proud again, allow them to worship as they ought, allow them to be a whole proud nation. Yet, the Messiah they received was so much different. But in reality, so much better. Because rather than throwing off the yoke of Roman oppression, the Messiah the world received threw off the yoke of sin. Rather than being an earthly king, they found a divine king. One that not only proclaims the good news to the people, but makes the good news literally manifest in each one of us by becoming one with us. So never again would we be forced to look for God in a far-off heaven or on a temple mount. But God is intimately close to us every moment of our lives by dwelling inside of us and inside of those we love. And if that wasn't good enough, the Messiah we received brought into our lives the promise and hope of eternal life. To be with God in God's ultimate love for all eternity. 
Now, I think you would agree with me. The Messiah we got was better than what the world looked for. And that's why we come together this day. Because we recognize that God's love is so much bigger than our minds will ever, ever be able to understand. And it's that love that we celebrate born in Bethlehem this day. But it's also the love we celebrate every day of our lives as we recognize that Christ's presence is truly one with us. Friends, I invite you to please stand as together we profess our common faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, (coughs) was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, today is born our Savior, Lord, Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. He heralds a new creation where all are invited to the kingdom. Let us bring this kingdom to our world through the prayers that we offer. For our church during this Christmas season, may our celebrations of Christ's birth draw us closer to you. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace on earth, And may this peace, which Christ offers, be a reality for all people. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alone this holiday season, may they know God's great love and comfort. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, May our celebration of Jesus' birth make us more aware of his infinite love and mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be brought into the Lord's eternal light and for those they leave behind. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the homebound. May they know the healing presence of Christ. For those whose names are written in the Parish Book of Intentions, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In your great love, O God, you have surrounded us with the radiance of the birth of your Son, Jesus. Grant that we may live in his light and always let our good deeds shine forth for all to see, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite you to please bring your offerings forward to the altar.
Please rise. <laughs> Pray that our gifts may be seen as acceptable to Almighty God. O Lord, as we look forward to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. So with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God. You love the human race, and you always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. Memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops and the entire people you have made your own, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We now pray together, united as one, and using the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of that peace.
Friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
O Lord, grant that we may draw new strength from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for your quiet, prayerful patience during that medical emergency. Um, I really appreciate that. And also, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Be careful leaving the parking lot still a little slick, so be careful on your way out. But I hope to tomorrow is a time of peace and uh, family for all of you. The Lord be with you. With Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated them this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illuminate your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realms, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.